The Ryan Reese Show from Southern California. This is The Ryan Reese Show. Post your questions using at Ryan Reese on his Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. Are you ready? All right, it's going down. I have Helen Taylor, the direct vice president of Promotion. Impact That's right. for Exodus Cry. Now, a lot of you guys are listening right now. That might ring a bell because I had Benji, which was is the founder, mm-hmm. of founder and president, ex, founder and president of Exodus Cry. He man, he was on my show. I don't even know years ago, at least like five or six years ago, and we were we were pushing the the film you guys did called Nefarious, mm-hmm. and we actually had a premiere at Calvary Chapel Dymo at the church here, and um, we had all kinds of people, and that film was amazing. It was, you know what? I love that film because it was so raw, mm-hmm. and it just said it the way it was. Because a lot of Christian films, and I don't even know if it was necessarily a Christian film, but it had a lot of mainstream marketing. But yeah. it it literally just said the way. It is, and that's what I. That's the first thing. Once I saw the film, that drew me to a relationship to to to, to get involved with you guys and, and have you out. And you know, funny enough, I was down in San Clemente. Uh, I was. I don't know. Me and my wife were down there uh, get a coffee or, or probably eating the mud pie ice cream at San Clemente Pier. If you ever oh, go there, sounds delicious. Get it with the fudge and the the nuts. It's amazing. But uh, I hear, hey Ryan. I look over. He's oh, it's me, Benji. So I haven't seen him in years. Oh. And then, leading up to you, I'm driving down the street, and I was listening to a radio station here in Southern California, and I heard uh, you speaking, actually, and I was like, oh, shoot, they're back at it. They got some more stuff up their sleeve. They're dropping some new content. Mm-hmm. So it was just, uh, it was awesome. So I, I, you know, I hit up Brian Perez, mm-hmm. gave him a call, and said, get me that girl's number. We need to get her in studio ASAP. So now here we are. So I'm excited to have you in studio. Yeah, well, thanks so much, Ryan, for having us out. And I love that you and Benji go way back and just, um, it's so cool wherever I go around the States, I meet people who've either seen Nefarious, been to a screening of it, hosted a screening of it, Mm -hmm. or tell us they're full time in the anti-trafficking movement because of that film and um, the ripple effect. It was God's favor, like God's favor was on that film and the, the wide reaching impact of it. And at the time, we were in Kansas City, Missouri as an organization, mm-hmm. and we've relocated the whole organization out to California. So we're neighbors, we're locals now. That's amazing. So this is great timing. You know what's interesting? It's funny that you just said that. You said that it has inspired people to do the human trafficking thing. Yeah. Now, I have a f- personal friend of mine that was there at the premiere. Yeah. He was, at, he was a military. He was mm-hmm. an ex-military, and then um, he became a, a fireman, but he wanted to get involved at some capacity and he later on ended up I saw him later uh he ended up getting involved in that video literally at that time inspired him and he got involved in some ministry uh that does um you know human trafficking uh, rescue and stuff so come on totally that's That's that that literally is one of my good friends that that happened to yeah so from that premiere here so all right well look at there's people that want to hear more about it um brag about it tell us about it (laughs) what um so how did it start off first of all Mm-hmm. And then I want to kind of talk to you about how you, why you even got involved with this yeah. ministry. Sure. Well, Benji was part of the International House of Prayer um, in Kansas it. City, the 24-7 prayer room. And back in 2007, he first heard about the issue of trafficking. His heart was so gripped by this issue. And two days later, he was leading a prayer meeting and so shared with the group, um, like, this is what God's put on my heart. I've just found out about this. And the whole group just started weeping. And they led this prayer meeting. There were a few hundred people in the room. And people were on their knees just crying out to God for an inbreaking of justice. A lot of people for the first time ever were finding out about what the term sex trafficking even meant. Back in 2007, it really wasn't talked about that much. No. And then the very next day, it was all over the headlines that the largest human trafficking bust in world history had just happened. Now, there's been bigger busts since then, Mm -hmm. but this was a global bust across 77 different countries. Really? Thousands of rescues and arrests. And so obviously that investigation had been months building up to it. But at the last minute, when things needed to come together and the police needed to make those arrests, they did. And the the news said this was like finding a needle in a haystack. This was like a, a very unusual child trafficking ring exposed in the way it was so then Benji continues leading prayer meetings and telling people about what's going on 
And this lady comes up to him one day with $10,000 saying, I believe God's called you to start an organization to fight sex trafficking. And that wasn't even on his radar to start a nonprofit, but his background was in filmmaking. So he used that money to do um, a trip out to Southeast Asia, which eventually became the film Nefarious, which was um, took place in 19 different countries. It became a, a film that really covers the, the global issue of trafficking. And that film's been viewed millions of times around the world. It's been viewed in the, screened in the White House, screened at the UN, in mm -hmm. parliaments mm -hmm. across the world. And it's been used to change laws, which is really um, exciting as well, because at that time there was a real surge in um, just awareness and people wanting to do more um, to fight this issue. And our film, like the Lord's favor on it, like I said, really meant it got into places and got through doors and made a, a such a significant impact that um, yeah, to this day, we still are seeing the fruit of. We put it on YouTube last year. I was it's just going to ask you. Views. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I was just going to ask you where people can find it. Yes, yeah. on and YouTube. It's Nefarious Merchant of Souls. Watch, listen, right now, get it, get on YouTube and get that film because it is literally amazing. Mm, Such a good, you. powerful, powerful film. So you did that. You toured that. I know you were doing a bunch of screenings. He was speaking. And then what was the next uh, project that you guys recently had something on Netflix, right? Yeah. So just to step back just for oh, a yeah. second, we decided to model the organization after William Wilberforce and how he abolished the transatlantic slave trade. Mm -hmm. um, and it took years of campaigning and lobbying for that to be overturned. William Wilberforce um, and his community, the Clapham sect, really gave their lives to fight this. And what they found was before they could really pass laws that seem like such a no-brainer to us. It's really difficult to think of a time in human history, especially when the church was so on board with slavery as a natural part of the human hierarchy. Like it's so despicable, but Wilberforce was one of the few people at that time really pushing for change, but he realized he had to shift the culture before legislation could pass. He had to shift the mindset. He had to thrust this issue into the conscience of a nation. Um, and so we've sort of looking at Wilberforce um, in history as a blueprint and example of how he campaigned. And so looking to shift culture, to change hearts and um, pass legal policy mm -hmm. and engage in legal reform. Um, and so our films, um, Nefarious was the first one. And then a few years later, we released one called Liberated the New Sexual Revolution. And that was purchased by Netflix. We released it right as the Me Too movement was blowing up. And so it was one of the few films at that time that really addressed sexual assault and young young people and how culture and pop culture influence sexual behavior, kind of the pornification of culture and how it impacts um, young people on co like college spring break trips. And so that's on Netflix, Liberated. I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm pretty sure I saw it. I, yeah, I am. I did watch it. I just have seen so many films. I'm trying to remember it exactly, but I did watch it. And that's interesting that you know your guys' model is to 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 change culture because mm -hmm. if you're going to vote on anything, they have to be aware. Mm -hmm. And sex trafficking yeah. is such a thing that is yeah. it's underground and and you don't really see mm -hmm. what's really happening. So if you could expose it, the darkness, then people could be aware of it and then they could get behind it and then that's when you could vote mm -hmm. and, and change yeah. laws. And you guys are doing a good job because like I said, you've motivated many people to get into this and it's mm -hmm. it's endless. I mean, even with the open borders now, I mean, I mean I'm mean, i sure you probably heard statistics of, of what's happening over there, uh, mm -hmm. how many you know people, kids are going missing and, and people are getting assaulted on the mm -hmm. way over, you know, moms and just boys and girls kids so it's yeah. it's crazy out there but how so how did everything go with uh the netflix what's what's been or that that actual film what was the response of that have you got did you guys get to do touring uh touring screenings yeah. and speaking yeah we toured it across college campuses in the u.s and the uk so we took it um to berkeley and ucla and then like multiple states as part of our contract with netflix they let us do screenings that's amazing and what was really crazy yeah. i don't know if you remember in it a guy called shay who's originally from australia but he's like the main guy in the film who's mm -hmm. sleeping with girl after girl and really just caught up in the whole hookup culture and you know like 
having virgins as his conquest and boasting about like blood on the sheets and showing up to the. I remember, remember this. That guy? Yes. So he's yes. he's like. That's right. You you watch him and your heart breaks for yeah. you know how he's acting out like this stereotype of mm -hmm. of a frat boy essentially. Yes. Yes. And what happened was since his film his scenes were filmed, um, Benji reached back out to him telling him like hey buddy you remember that um that you know we, we met you on spring break and we filmed some of those scenes netflix is actually buying this film wow. and he was like but benji wanted to give him the heads up just out of respect and show let him see the film yeah, yeah. and this guy was like well actually in the few years since those scenes were filmed, I've gone on a massive heart journey. I've stopped doing alcohol, doing drugs. I don't sleep around. I've been going on a journey of self-discovery. I'm getting into volunteering and the environment. And like he said, could I tour this film with you if you guys tore it? Oh, Are you kidding me? Yeah, so That's he was, amazing. He was like, if I can stop one young man from making some of the same decisions I did. And we were like, okay, it's a bit of a risk because we yeah. didn't really know him, yeah. but... He came on the tour with us. It was so powerful, Ryan. He'd come out on stage and you can imagine everyone in the room, especially every woman is like, what is that guy doing here? He's the guy yes, from the film. That, that must I wanna, have been shocking. I want to give a little like <laughs> punch. And people are looking shocked. They're like, why is he on the panel? What's he doing here? And he would come out so bravely, like talk about the courage to face. That's pretty it. gnarly. He would do that. Yeah. Actually. And he would he would basically repent to every woman in the room who'd ever been objectified or degraded in the way that he objectified and degraded women in the film. And he said, I take full ownership and responsibility of my actions. And I also recognize the ways that the culture like impacted my behavior and made me think that this is what it looked like to be a real man. This is how I had to behave and act and sleep with girl after girl and prove my masculinity in this way. And he's like, it's all a lie. I felt more empty, more like just depressed, more low than I've ever felt in my life in the midst of all of that. And it's, it's so powerful. So we actually, we filmed the tour of all of that and we're gonna be releasing that around spring break next year. I want to watch this. That is yeah. heavy. I did not know that. Okay, so it yeah. sounds like that film and that tour went well. Yeah, so that went well. And then just a month, about a month ago, um, September 30th on my birthday, actually. Yeah. Happy we, birthday. Thank you. We released our latest film called Raised on Porn, and that is also on YouTube. We just wanted it to be most widely accessible for people, and it's only 35 minutes. And that is a film about the childhood impact of pornography, what happens to the brain, tons of different stories of different ways that pornography exposure as a child impacted people's behavioral relationships. And it really feels like one of the most relevant cultural issues of our time that we need to be talking about. And um, and the last like year and a half, everything that happened with our Pornhub campaign called Trafficking Hub, um, we just really feel like pornography is like, talk about going after the root of sex trafficking. Pornography is really like the marketing force behind the route and we, we sometimes say if every man stopped purchasing women and children for sex sex trafficking would end today yeah. and so as an organization we've really looked at the roots the issues further upstream and of course you want to address who are the most vulnerable populations to human trafficking and how do we reduce those populations how do we you know pass laws that protect them and have um, exit programs for those who are trafficked and um, but we also can't like not talk about the elephant in the room of why do traffickers make so much money? We talk about, you know, it's a $150 billion industry. Where does all that money come from? It's from um, sex buyers. Sex buyers are what fuel the business of sex trafficking. Okay, so with that said, you're saying that pornography starts it all. Yes. How? So I'm not saying that every person who watches pornography then becomes a sex buyer, but from every sex buyer that we've ever interviewed, and Benji's done another film about that that will be coming out in the future, a common thread between all of these guys was childhood exposure to porn, long-standing addiction, and them vocalizing the idea of some of these sex acts that I'm seeing on in porn, my wife or girlfriend will never do those, but I know that I can pay someone and they don't have a choice. Like, I'm in, you know, if I'm purchasing the experience, they do whatever I tell them to do. Mm -hmm. And so that is like the power dynamic that takes place in the sex industry. The person with the power, the agency, we always say like, oh, did she choose prostitution or was she trafficked? And what we need to focus more on, I believe, is who does have the choice, the agency, the money, the power, it's the sex buyers. Mm -hmm. And we want to reach their hearts. Like I hate what, um, what, what this does to the hearts of men. I've worked in red light districts in 10 different countries around the world. 
and seen how um, men who purchase sex become this um, zombified, dehumanized version of themselves and it, it robs them of, of so much of who they're originally meant to be. Um, but we have to go after the root. What is the root of, of sex buyers? Um, it's the fantasy of, of what they've seen in porn. And it's, it's tragic. Like They actually experienced a form of sexual violation by being exposed to porn as a child. The porn industry is a money-making, predatory industry that knows kids and teens watch their, their channels, but they don't um, put the age verification in process. And that's something that we're working on right now, but we really want to go after the hearts of sex buyers. You took the words out of my mouth. You said fantasy. And yeah. that's why I was asking you, mm. why do you think porn is the one thing that starts it all? It's fantasy. Yeah. It's, it's literally making your fantasy become a reality. Right. And maybe you're, maybe you're not even able to even get a girlfriend or a boyfriend or whatever, you know, because mm. for whatever reason you, and you're, watching pornography and now your mind is living on this fantasy mm -hmm. so where are you going to act out on this you know maybe even just to have sex you know what i mean you want to if you're if you're hooked on porn you're sexually on fire mm -hmm. literally and, mm -hmm. and and if anyone that's watched porn like myself or anyone else progress the pro progression of porn it grows it gets more hardcore and the more of an appetite you have uh for porn so where do you get it? Through prostitution or, you know, like buy a girl or rent a girl or whatever, whatever, whatever it be. And then, um, and then there's those, then you have the other guys that are um, just, they want to be with a different girl every night, so they pay. And then you have the other guys that basically their wife won't do this, so they go out and, mm -hmm. and, and do it. so there's just many things, but it all, leads to unbalanced sexual sex because you're doing stuff that's not the Bible teaches one man, one woman, and that's where it's all supposed to be. And, you know, if you're under God, then he works it all out. But if you are out of those guidelines or boundaries, if you will, yeah. um, and you're acting and watching pornography, of course, everything's going to get twisted. Yeah. So you, your whole concept, every, your whole mentality yeah. is twisted. And our film really breaks that down, and we speak to neuro, like neuroscientists and psychologists and oh, counselors yeah. and all yeah, of those, yeah. and they talk about how porn re really does rewire the brain. And we're, we're like, Ernie Allen from the National Center of Missing Children says we're in the midst of the largest social experiment, um, and even pornography in the last 50 years has changed so much. We're not talking about pages in a magazine, Playboy. We're talking about really hardcore, violent videos. Um, and the average age of exposure is anywhere between 7 to, to 13, around 11 by the most conservative guesses. And so kids are being exposed to this, then brought up expecting that this is um, normal and like they're getting their sex ed through porn and they are being exposed to the most violent, dehumanizing, graphic um, pornography that I think most parents don't even have any idea what pornography is currently right now. I, You know what? I don't. I haven't watched porn in 13 years. Yeah, and it's that changed was, a lot. And that's the thing. That's during that whole uh, transition, like you were just saying. Like I, I mean, I was watching hardcore stuff. That's probably like soft yeah. compared to the way oh, it is for sure. now. Because you hear it's violent, this and that, all this stuff. And then, you know, also, uh, I think it was Barna Group. They were talking about like 50% of Christian kids watch porn. Uh, and they, they say that's their sex education. Yeah, I've so heard you, it's actually 76%. Oh, we, okay, yeah, more. So here you go. You got Christian kids watching it, yeah. and they think that's their sex education, and who knows what they're watching. And yeah. then all of a sudden, this guy or this girl, they just think it's supposed to be whatever they're watching. Again, I haven't watched porn in years, so yeah. that's pretty crazy when you really yeah. think about. Yeah. And then even talk to, tell, tell some more statistics of like the effects of porn on the mind and the brain. And yeah. All these studies that are pointing to the impact on, on the brain of how it increases anxiety and depression um, for girls, a real sense of body shaming and like comparison and never feeling good enough. And we're already just in the last year even understanding the impact of social media on self-esteem and like the brain is so vulnerable when you're a child, when you're a teen. Um, right, I want to go back because I want to unpack yeah. this. So, so you're okay for the shame. Why are these guys feeling shame or people feeling shame? 
the fact of being firstly exposed to this type of content, like I was saying before, yeah. A lot of children experience it as a form of sexual violation or assault. Like, imagine some six or seven year old child accidentally stumbles onto Pornhub. They're just like, oh shoot, yeah. 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 So we we had this. We've had a lot of parents reach out to us. One story that just comes to mind is yeah. this mum who told us that last Thanksgiving um, she get let her eight year old son just play on her phone, thinking it was on game. You know, he's playing on games. She was a, a youth leader who thought she had all the their filters on her phone and she'd come out of porn addiction both her and her husband so she was already more active and proactive than a lot of parents after 45 minutes of him playing on his phone in the corner um, they pack up to leave and she just notices that her son is really quiet and just doesn't look himself he looks really kind of heavy and she just has the thought I should just look and see what he was watching she checks on her phone and realized he'd accidentally got onto Pornhub and for the last 45 minutes had been watching video after video on loop because they just play on loop of like the most graphic oh, anal sex, gang bang gosh. videos, incest themes, like the, the racist and violent content that is on Pornhub that her eight-year-old son, they hadn't even had the sex conversation with him yet. How old so is he? He's eight years old. Eight years old. That's gnarly. And so that is so the fact gnarly. that sites like Pornhub and these other sites, they have zero age verification. They don't even have a click if you're over 18. So that's something that we're currently focused on. We've got a campaign called Protect Children, Not Porn, um, going alongside with our Raised on Porn film that anyone can watch if they go to raisedonporn.com um, or find it on our YouTube channel. Um, but we've written a petition calling for these porn sites to have age verification. Like the technology already exists to implement it, but it hasn't been passed. And so, so any anyone kid, could go watch any this kid, stuff. Yeah. yeah. And they're even on the home pages of these sites, they're free videos. And so kids. Just to get them. Yeah, yeah. this is crazy. I'm yeah. surprised that, 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 that it's even like that. That is so. Well, nuts. you say you're surprised, but if we think about it, I bet porn sites know how much traffic they get from kids and teens. Oh, they know. of course they know. So, And the more they traffic they get, the more money they get. Right. Um, they get money from Of course, from they're ads. not trying to shut it down. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so th we were talking about uh, shame. I, li I like how you yes. tell these stories along with that. Well, the next thing was, um, oh, uh, women, self-image. Yeah. Uh, tell us what that looks like and why they're feeling like this. Yeah, For the well, listeners. so Because there's a lot of people that have not been watching porn that are actually listening to these stations. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, Pornhub, in their 2019 statistics, they release a report every year, said that one in three hits on Pornhub is actually females now. One so in three, we, got it. So we've had a huge increase in women being exposed to porn or te teen girls. Um, the way that they experience watching pornography, um, sometimes different reasons to, to guys getting on porn sites. Sometimes it's the same out of curiosity or accidentally, but pornography is created to be so addictive, more addictive than drugs. The impact on, uh, you know, the dopamine hits of the impact on the brain um, is, is real for girls as well as boys. And so really? for the girls, we're yeah. seeing that um, girls are getting addicted, but I'd say in some contexts, there's even more shame for girls than boys um, from what we had girls tell us because it's less spoken about, and especially in the church, it's mm -hmm. much more taboo even for girls to watch porn. Um, for boys, it's kind of almost like wink, wink, nudge, nudge. We know probably all boys struggle with porn, but it's only really con put in the context of sin and shame in the church, like going back to what we were just saying before. It's mm -hmm. like repent, bring us to God, ask for deliverance. It's not really educating people on like you've actually been assaulted, uh, the equivalent of heroin being injected to you against your will. You watched porn, you were exposed yeah. to porn. Whoa. and that's crazy. And you're trying to fight this, but you're not even like aware and being educated on the symptoms, the reality, and like real practical things, like resources to actually help you um, like de detoxify your brain and unbrainwash yourself um, because it's not just like, a, you know, a sin and shame thing. I think that's really an unhelpful way to even frame it. Yeah, I want to definitely make awareness to uh, to people that, you know, have girls or daughters or, mm. you know, if you think that the women are not watching pornography, it is a thing. And even before I was even saved, you know, 13 years, when I gave my life to God 13 years ago, yeah. the majority of the girls I dated, they were they all watched porn. Yeah. Like, it, and, th and this was like a, this was a thing. So now, I mean, think about how much, how fast everything has progressed. Once I got saved, that's when the Apple phone came out. Yeah. Okay, so this was pre-Apple phone on computers that mm -hmm. the girls the girls I was dating were watching porn. So now with the Apple phone and the new exposure rate, it's it's a lot. Yeah. It's it's the girls and guys. It's it's 
Yeah, I would yeah. I would not just be like it's a guy thing. Yeah. I mean, I was speaking at a school up in uh, San Jose. This was probably like ten years ago. I was at a middle school. Mm-hmm. No, I was at a high school, and I was in the classroom and I started talking about porn, and they started laughing. And then after this girl came up to me, and goes, "Hey, you were saying that porn's bad." I was in Silicon Valley mm-hmm. at a, at a public school there, and she says, "You said porn's bad." She's like, "Why is it bad?" Mm-hmm. Like she didn't know. She literally just. She wasn't a Christian, but she didn't she didn't know why it was bad. Wow. It was like sex ed. Now think about how many people that don't think it's bad because they yeah. it's just in that culture you just grow up in yeah. this this culture yeah. and but the effects of the pornography is just yeah. destroying. Yeah. And then going back to what we originally said, now you have all these people trying to live out their fantasies, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you think about how many people are watching pornography. I mean, you probably have those numbers in the world, and that's a lot of well. This is what also causes people to get molested. Uh, p- yeah, neighbors and people, yeah. to, uh, family members to act out exactly. on kids. Exactly. And you know what I mean? And so much of child abuse cases, it isn't by like pedophiles, it's by other kids their age or teenagers acting out, copying what they're seeing in porn. And we've had those in the medical community talk to us and say that talk there's about that, not yeah. enough awareness that like teenagers or like older kids are watching porn and the desire to act out what they're seeing. And they're acting out just on younger on, kids. On or the kids, exactly. See, dude, that, that's yeah. a whole nother. Yeah. So that's a and whole so, nother. So people who want yeah. to protect kids from child abuse, a lot of the times they're not even thinking that it would be pornography inspiring other kids. Um, I've, you, yeah. you believe this. I was going to say believe it or not. <laughs> you yeah. can believe this. I've heard actually several stories yeah. of, of, of uh, these things happening. So it's yeah. a real thing. It's been happening for a long time. Yeah. And uh, it will continue to, yeah. to grow because of uh, the whole uh, yeah. pornography. But like you said, the, the kids never, have never had such easy access. Like yeah. the smartphones, yep. from the, the magazines to the computers, like the access of the smartphone. Um, and so we have a whole page on our website that's all the best resources for anyone wanting freedom from porn addiction, Perfect. for spouses, for partners, but also the best filters available, the best apps, like all of it, like we put together on our, on one page. What's our website? Um, so it's uh, exoduscry.com mm-hmm. and you can easily find it. I need to get mine set up because I got a bunch of kids and they're on, like, you know, we give them like a certain amount of time a day to watch. Yeah, yeah. But you got to have those filters up. Yeah. All it takes is that one time. And boom, they've been injected with heroin, like you were yeah, saying, yeah, the dopamine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so and we have like resources it. of the books for parents to talk through their kids. I feel like the most important thing ultimately for prevention is um, is education, is conversation. Um, like, as well as parents doing everything they can to put filters on, they need to be talking to their kids. It's it's not about if, if your kid will see porn, it's when your kid will see porn, yep. how to help them navigate through that conversation. Um, and one part of this whole conversation that we haven't really touched on yet, but what we spent the last year exposing was that the, ma- the biggest porn site in the world, Pornhub, has more hits than Netflix and Amazon, 115 million hits per day in their 2019 report. They did not verify the age or consent in any of their millions of videos on their website. So we started a petition um, just over a year ago to say Pornhub needs to be shut down. They're not verifying age and consent. That means there could be hundreds, thousands of underage videos or videos of non-consensual content, revenge porn, trafficking victims. And um, we we made an animated video about this that had 34 million views worldwide. So during COVID, when people were spending time at home, they um, we really believe like this campaign blew up. It became a global movement called tra- the Trafficking Hub Movement. Hey, it, hold that thought. Yeah. Because we're going to be going to break right now. Okay. I want to plug a couple <laughs> things. We have uh, Helen... Taylor in studio from Exodus Cry, Vice President of Impact. Awesome. So before we go to the break, um, I do want to plug all the whosoever stuff. Uh, book us. We are touring the nation still. Um, we happen to be, we went to some troubled youth this uh, last week and got to uh, um, pray with them. That They've been through some pretty gnarly stuff, but I won't talk about that in the air. And uh, we got to pray with them, give them the gospel. We got to baptize them. Um, lead them to the Lord. I left them with my book called Kill the Noise. Awesome. Uh, it's it's wherever books are sold. You can buy them. And it's a discipleship faith building tool to help people find their uh, identity in Christ, disciple, hear God's voice, see the plans that God has for you, even wait and find your soulmate. Christian dating, no, no sleeping around, no kissing. I did that on purpose because I was not quite opposite. 
that was gnarly, that, but that was a work of God. But God got me through, and he sh- brought me the girl of my dreams. But it's all here for you to grow in your faith. Um, check us out at whosoers.com, and we will be back in a couple minutes. More of The Ryan Reese Show coming up. Post your questions at Ryan Reese on his Instagram, Twitter, and or Facebook. So we've been here in California and the pandemic shut everything down. Around the world, people are afraid and on edge. I thought it'd be a good opportunity for the whosoever's to be active and doing ministry in this time right now. Since everything's shut down, Idaho's open, so that means we can give the gospel out and reach as many people as possible. We came up with 10,000 flyers, 100 posters, and I just charged it to Idaho. Every whosoever's trip is completely insane. Life changing. Guns, God, fireworks, <laughs> the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is going down. Skateboarding. I missed it. He came up to me and he's like, dude, what happened tonight was crazy. I've been to youth group, I've been to church, but I've never experienced what happened tonight. And I said, shut your mouth, dude, okay? And I said, wait till the camera gets here. <laughs> Yeah, now I went from tour mode to daddy duty, so this is gonna be interesting. <laughs> You're like, why am I here? Why am I going through this? Why is this happening? Sometimes there's not answers to that. During this time of coronavirus, when everything's been put on pause, a lot of people were left to look in the mirror of asking themselves, who am I? Who am I without school, sports, you know, social media, friends, and all of these hobbies? God cares about the smallest details because he has a plan and he has a purpose for everyone's life. That's the message we share with the youth of the nation and of the world. He loves you and he has a plan for every detail of your life. And if you're willing to step out by faith, well, you're gonna watch God do the impossible. Keep coming, this is awesome. This is awesome, this is why I came. We're saying there's best trick contest happening. The city doesn't know, no one knows. We don't even know if we're gonna get shut down. But as far as I'm concerned, came up with the idea, God confirmed, so I just left and we went to Idaho. Same face, not again. Now back, back to the Ryan Reese Show. Yes, and at break, we were talking about California taxes. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of money going out of the pocket. Uh, so right before the break, Helen Taylor, the vice president of outreach of and impact, or vice president of impact, same thing. Yeah. Yeah. You, you basically, I, I was the director of outreach, so that's you, why it's confusing. You make it happen. <laughs> So I'm excited to have you back in studio. Right before the break, we were just talking about how you guys came up with that um, that new campaign. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, and you're with Exodus Cry, and it's a it's an awesome, awesome nonprofit slash ministry that gets it done. You got several films, one on Netflix, uh, the other one on YouTube, Nefarious. Um, and if you guys want to catch more of the show and you just tuned in, go to ryan-reese.com and watch the video on YouTube and watch the whole show because it's amazing the stuff and the knowledge she's been dropping about what is going on with this human trafficking and pornography and all the side effects of it. And um, yeah, so you guys came with this campaign to go after uh, Pornhub, yeah, which is like the number one porn. The number one porn site is self-proclaimed partly because the company that owned Pornhub is called MindGeek, which no one's ever heard of MindGeek, but they own about 70 to 80% of all the online porn tube sites. They're a real global giant over porn. Most people have just heard about Pornhub because like we were I'm saying, a, they- Sorry, I'm gonna ask you a scoop because of the mic. Sorry about that. <laughs> yes, okay. Um, so Pornhub partnered with New York Fashion Week. They had billboards at Times Square. They Damn. had were endorsed by Kanye West famously. They were really trying to brand themselves in this mainstream pop culture way as the kind of cheeky mainstream porn site. And so a lot of people just really thought this is probably the most ethical porn site. It's the most, it's, it's just normalized it, right? Wow. Wow. And so we... Well, I told you that I was at a rave with, yeah. uh, I was just going out there, I was checking out things to see what's going on. And I saw in this huge rave, 
you know, in this just this one stage, there had to be like 40,000 people just at this one stage. And there was, you know, at Raves, sometimes they have these big flags that people hang, you know, whatever their colors or their states or whatever, or their countries. And this, I saw a big flag that said Pornhub. And the guy's waving it back and forth. I mean, talking about direct marketing to the consumer. Yeah. I they, mean, they, really, they were like in pop culture, yeah. Yeah, infiltrating everywhere that was cool, that they they wanted to be seen and have that image. Um, but we kept seeing stories in the media, uh, like there was this one girl, this 15-year-old missing girl who was trafficked in Florida. 58 videos of her being trafficked were found on Pornhub, and that was actually how she was even no found. No way. So my colleague like read, read, reads this story, right? And she's like, wait, how does a 15-year-old trafficked individual get videos on Pornhub? And so she decides to check how what's the process for uploading a video to Pornhub. Yeah. All she needed was an email address. They didn't verify age or consent. And so her brain's beginning to turn thinking, oh if Pornhub gosh. don't verify age or consent on their 13 million videos, how many illegal other illegal videos are on Kids, this site? Kids, are you watching? Yeah. Wow. So she wrote an op-ed for the Washington Examiner in February 2020. So it's like just a few weeks before you know the COVID lockdown. Um, the very next day, a story of a 14-year-old girl um, who'd been gang raped and had uh, been filmed and that was uploaded to Pornhub and a kid in her class saw it and told her. So she emails Pornhub saying, I'm 14, like this was a rape, like take this down. Oh They my didn't gosh. reply to her. She told me personally she would email them every single day, sometimes up to three times a day for six months. And then she just had the idea of, I'm going to pretend to be a lawyer and see if that will make them change their minds. So she makes a fake email address pretends to be a lawyer, says, Pornhub, I'm going to sue you. Um, you know, I represent this client. Like, she, she's a really smart kid. They took the video down within 48 hours. But that story was reported on by the BBC, and so it created this, like, international spark where Whoa. suddenly people were waking up to the fact that the largest porn site in the world doesn't verify age or consent. So how many videos on there are non-consensual or illegal. That is insane. So we had whistleblowers coming to us telling us, oh yeah, there's like less than 30 moderators even moderating this content. Like it's it's so much is slipping through the net. It's not being properly moderated. Um, we started this petition. It had got over 2 million signatures. And my, yeah, like throughout the whole of 2020, we were campaigning hard on this and 300 other organizations jumped on board. So it became like a real like movement in the anti-trafficking movement. We called it Trafficking Hub. And uh, Nick Kristoff, prize-winning journalist from the New York Times, heard about it, reaches out to us. He does his own article, his own investigation. He said within like 10 minutes, he found non-consensual videos of unconscious women with their eyeballs being touched to show in the video these are non-conscious. Like, are these you are unconscious. serious? Unconscious women. Oh my women. gosh, it's so gnarly in the porn world now. So wow. he, he interviews survivors, some who were underage in these videos, some who were trafficking victims. He writes this incredible article called The Children of Pornhub. Comes out in December 2020. And within a couple of days, all the major credit card companies, MasterCard, Visa, Discover, they all cut ties because they're like, we don't want to be processing payments for a website hosting and profiting from illegal content, right? I saw that. Do you remember in the seeing news. that in the yes. news? Yes. Okay, and so that is a, that was a major hit. Major financially. breakthrough. Wow. So then there's only cryptocurrency left on Pornhub. Right. A couple of days after that, they announced they're deleting 80% of their site. They're removing 80 million, sorry, 10 million videos, all their unverified 80 content. 80% of their, their site was illegal. Well, 80% of it was unverified. And so unverified. basically they had no idea how much of it on there was, was illegal. So they deleted, they also delete the download button. So before, up until then, Pornhub, they started in 2007, they had a download button. So anyone could watch and download these videos. So imagine if you're a trafficking victim, a video of you is on Pornhub. You spend months getting them to take it down. Maybe they eventually do, but then someone the following week re-uploads it or it's on another website because anyone forever, could download yeah. it. It's forever. So they removed the download button, which is what we'd been telling them to do. And they, they blamed us in a statement. They were like, this is a smear campaign from this Christian organization, Did Exodus Cry. And I was like, screenshot, they just gave us the credit. Like, yes. this is historical. Victims all over the world have been victimized in the, these videos on this website. Um, now there's about 97 victims suing Pornhub, seven major you. lawsuits. Yeah. So, so, what, so how much is? Yeah, I was going to ask you now. Where now? Where are the lawsuits now? So how much is? Yeah. Uh, how much are they trying to assume? Like, do you, is there like a total number of lawsuits? There's seven lawsuits. Some of them are class actions. Some of them are civil litigations. Um, Girls do porn was a famous porn partner channel of Pornhub. Yeah. 
and they sued them for, I think it was $600 million. They just settled a few weeks ago on an undisclosed amount. Unbelievable. But this, I mean, th this was a, a real case of human trafficking. Yeah. Um, victims, women who were told that they were going to be in modeling shoots and it was like yeah. pornography and they yeah. were coerced into that. And we've, we've worked with victims who, like, like, people often ask us the connection between porn and trafficking and we say, okay, if it fuels demand, like we were talking about earlier, um, people who watch porn, like internalize this fantasy, want to then act out and purchase someone. Um, the majority of sex buyers are actually married or have girlfriends, 87% of sex buyers. So um, the majority are actually purchasing a, a sex slave experience or the porn star experience. Right. Um, but then you have the distribution element. So on Pornhub, all these videos of real trafficking victims were being distributed in porn. You also have women who are trafficked into the porn industry, even the LA legal porn industry. And sometimes the things that they um, sign to do on, on their contracts are totally not what they have to, are yep. then told to do on the studio sets. We work with someone who was trafficked in porn from age 14 to 17 in Portland, Oregon, in studio warehouses. And so for porn consumers, they're watching these videos and like they're not verifying the consent. There was literally no way to know if the girl behind the screen consented to what she's doing in this porn video. And so we're wanting to educate people on the real connections between porn and trafficking. But we're also like, we're so grieved for this generation and how porn has negatively impacted, not just in the church, um, but I mean, starting in the church, the fact that this isn't talked about um, as much as we believe it should be. And we really created Raised on Porn with the hope that kids, um, parents would, would watch this as well as young adults. Um, anyone um, probably over the age of 16 should see this film. Yes, and where can they see it? Raisedonporn.com or the Exodus Cry or Magic Lantern Pictures YouTube channel, which is our film production wing of the organization. Awesome, get it, watch it, and um Wow, my mind is just blown. I was just thinking about how there's so many people that have, I mean, that's just kind of the, 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 the time that we live in, you know, like, you know, you're hearing about all these people, all these kids getting in fights at schools or filming it or they're going around fighting people and they're filming it. It's just the, the, the cameras, the smartphones, it's there. Yeah. And then you get addicted to pornography. You see it like six or seven and then the progression of it. Next thing you know, you want to act it out. And a lot of like what you're saying is a lot of these victims are being act it's been acted out from other family members or older people in the neighborhood or whatever. So there's that whole ripple effect of of, of stuff. This is why porn is so gnarly. It's so addicting. I, I talked about this on the radio show a while ago, but um, so you know I haven't watched it in like 13 years. But I was uh, I was in my living room. Uh, on my, you know, like, what is it, like the bark, the counter, the counter countertop, so sitting there at the stools, and I was, uh, someone told me, hey, check out this Christian film by this this New York pastor. He had, like, a movie out or something, so just watch the trailer. So I just Googled it, clicked on it, and went to Facebook. It, like, the video, I get, the video was in, the trailer for the video was in, um, it's on about a, pa it's about a pastor, but you watch the link on Facebook. So I click on the video, I watch the trailer, and then immediately after that, soft porn comes on on Facebook wow. and I have my kids watch there my kids are in my living room yeah. my wife's there yeah. my mother-in-law and I I stopped it and I'm all hey Crystal my mother I'm all hey, come over here check this out yeah. like this is crazy because like if I ever wow. get exposed to anything like that I always tell my wife just yeah. you know just in case it comes up in my history yeah. button and then yeah. my wife's like if, if if something ever if I ever got blamed for something they'd be like Oh, well, what about this thing? You know, yeah, so I'm like, sure. she knew. So yeah. I was like, but I was tripping out. I was like, dude, how is this? Oh. How it could just, that's how they hook you. Yeah. Facebook, soft porn pops up. And immediately, all of a sudden, you know, if you're not a man of the spirit, man of the flesh, all of a sudden you're just, boom, it just comes alive. And then you just yeah. click on it. You want to go deeper. One thing leads to the next. You go down that rabbit trail and you'll be yeah. at a place, you know. Wow. Dark I, place. It's so distressing um and we've been focusing on tiktok in the last few weeks as well yes talk about because, that so tiktok um you know the, the target audience is um young teens yeah. um, or it began as that being the target audience just a couple of weeks ago there was um, a hashtag called kink kink talk don't look yeah. it up obviously but 
Um, some of the videos, some that hashtag has been viewed over six billion times, and it's all to do with promoting videos related to um, like BDSM type of sex acts and choking and strangulation. So that's another whole aspect of porn that is so deeply troubling to us is the normalization of sexual violence yeah. and how like really really violent sex acts are normalized in porn, and that is what like kids and young adults are internalizing, getting their sex education, thinking strangling a girl is yeah. part of normal yeah. sex. And in the porn video, she's shown to be loving it. Like so much about porn is completely unrealistic. It is yeah. a fantasy, but it's a harmful fantasy because it's not the truth. Yes, which is crazy because what it does is it desensitizes mm -hmm. the viewer. Yeah. You know, um, a lot of it is, I mean, I've, I've, I've have a lot of friends that were uh, porn stars. You know, I've dated a couple of porn stars in my in my 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 past life, and when you talk to them, they'll say that it's it's all staged, it's all show, and it's 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 not enjoyable. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. just very gnarly. And, and when you talk yeah. to a lot of these porn stars, they're really jacked up, yeah. and there's their past is, is bad, fatherless. They've been abused. They're on drugs. You know, mm -hmm. drugs is a lot of drugs. So what you're seeing is a messed up girl yeah. being taken advantage of, numb on drugs and drunk, mm -hmm. so they don't actually feel what's happening in these yeah. photos. Yeah. And that and then the viewer that's watching this stuff is basically thinking it's real, it's fantasy, and it's so hardcore that normal, as you know. Then they try to go sleep with a, just a normal girl that they can't even be sexually um, aroused, I guess, by a normal mm -hmm. sex act. They need porn has rewired their brain that rewired. it's only through pixels that they can. It's, yeah. It has to be. That's why they try to go act this out. And yeah. then there's then you have these videos surfacing of people being abused and the whole thing. It's yeah. dark. Really dark. It's literally like going back to what Jesus says. I've quoted this verse many times. He says, the eyes are light to the body. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. if, you, if you think what you have is light, but it's really darkness, how, how dark is that? How, how, yeah. how really deep is that darkness? Like yeah. what you, the darkness, the light that you think you have, what you think is like you're living a light, yeah. but yet your eye, you've been watching all this dark stuff, yeah. but what you think is light, but it's really darkness. Yeah. How yeah. really deep and dark that stuff is. The good news is that you can get free and you can yes. exercise your will to um, choose not to engage in this. And you have to be aggressive. I mean, the analogies Jesus gives of like cutting off the hand, gouging out your eye, like- I just not, heard that verse today. Oh, yeah. So obviously not literally, but like that, the spiritual violence of it, I feel like um, Jesus, it's a deeply empowering thing. It's like you can like activate your will to go after this. You have to take personal responsibility over yourself, but we are absolutely in a war. Um, and, and Pornhub is like sites like these big money making million dollar, billion dollar companies, they have a financially vested interest on kids and youth getting hooked. Mm -hmm. And Pornhub had this meme last year of baby Yoda. And it said 10 minutes after my parents leave the room and it had Pornhub reflection in their eyes. So they were like in on the joke of we know kids watch our, our content, which made me so angry. But I will just say that for those who are in the porn industry, like we have the deepest compassion. We are paying for therapy yeah. for countless individuals, not just of trafficking, but those who are in any form of the sex industry. Yep. And when when we do outreach, we go to every part of the sex industry. So women in prostitution, strip clubs, illicit massage parlors, women advertise for sex online. We text them, we meet up with them. We do a weekly jail program. Like we are all about going to the places in the sex industry. I've done outreach at porn conventions yeah. and our heart yeah. is for the people. We're against the systems. We're against the corruption and the money-making aspect of that is causing real harm and trauma on real people. But those who are in it, um, we don't like we don't blame the the women who are yeah. who are in this industry. Like so many of them are women I've worked with for years and have walked through the trauma. Like you were mentioning some of their life situations, Ryan. Like it's, it's they it, it, they can be in counseling the rest of their life for what they experience. It's in not. It's not the, it's not the people that the that the problem is. It's it's sin, and they're victims of this stuff. So you guys are yeah. reaching out to them, mm -hmm. to that's why I say when you're looking at this stuff, 
you got to look at it's broken people. Yeah. You know, Jesus says, you know, the harvest is, 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 is ripe. You know, when he says when he saw them, he saw that he, his heart was moved with compassion. They were they were like lost, a sheep without a shepherd. You know, they were hopeless mm-hmm. and confused and and ill, you know, like ill. They, they're mentally like ill. Of what's yeah. the the sin and the stuff that they've been exposed to or the things that have been done. Now they're just acting out. Because they're ill, they need healing. And whoever is the Son of God, Jesus Christ, sets free is free indeed. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that's what you do. We have eight minutes left, Mm -hmm. so use this. Definitely continue to use this time to encourage. um, I'll say it like this: So, what if there's someone here that's hooked on porn? What would you say to them? I would say to them the the first step is for them to even want to change. Like you're never gonna get porn out of your life if you don't actually have that deep desire to really get rid of it and so it's like with anything like someone's not going to come off an alcohol addiction if they aren't at that place of being ready to get it out there so the first step I think is even them being convinced that it's harmful and having a negative impact on their life that it is addictive and so I think anyone confession number one confess exactly acknowledge accept watch our film you'll get to that point by the end of 35 minutes yeah um and then just know that like God is so for you, um, whether you know him or believe in him or not, like he is for you, championing um, you to get to get free and to be the true original um, person that he created you to be and everything that he wants for your life. I feel like porn addiction is one of those addictions that robs people of so much joy, so much relational interaction. Like he wants you to have real relationships and real meaningful connections and community and hobbies. He wants you to be alive on the inside. Um, And porn um, just ravages people's hearts and souls in the most horrific ways. Um, There are so many incredible resources from apps, accountability groups, real communities, real resources, education, blogs. Like like I said, we put together about um, 20 to 50 of some of the best resources for different categories on our website. Go to exoduscry.com or Raised on Porn and all of those um, resources are there. And just know that there's lots of online communities of other people, men or women. Um, my friend just a couple of months ago started a Nonprofit specifically for women trying to get free from porn, mm-hmm. um, and it's called Freedom Hub. And I like that. Yeah, Freedom, Freedom Hub. Hub. I yeah. know yeah. twist on porn. Yeah, Hub. yeah. Um, and so that's on our website too. And just just know that it is a very real reality. I think of someone like Russell Brand when he began to research the harms of porn. He was like, "Whoa, I need to cut this out of my life." But yeah. is it possible to really cut porn out? Like, doesn't every guy have to have this? And he discovered. No, they don't. You can literally cut this out of your life and make a decision to um, to walk away from porn. So, um, yeah, we are so passionate about this topic. We're, our whole organization is committed to going after all forms of commercial sexual exploitation. Um, and we really, well, like, we know that, um, like, there's issues of real human rights, but also the public health crisis aspect of porn. Um, we know that it's at the the root of the root of trafficking, but also the people who are affected by it, both in the industry and those watching this content um, really need help. But our priority right now is this age verification. We've got to have um, the government step in and mandate that all these porn sites, you cannot allow a child to access this kind of content and we're saying if you have to show government id to purchase alcohol and tobacco just we need to apply the same like well they used to that that legit like when we used to buy porn when you were younger you would have to have a be a certain age to get the magazine from behind the counter right so that should be implemented on on the internet right at the very least it would stop kids accidentally stumbling that's pretty porn. crazy they don't have that yeah if not, that's not one even of the laws. not even a click if you're over 18 and it's all these free videos that's popping what I'm up saying. it's it's, yeah. it's it's a whole nother it's very recent though we're literally talking about something in the last five years so think of all of human history the point we're in right now is a point that no other generation has ever been in and so we absolutely like if we don't fight for the protection of these kids like who will so um yeah well Thanks for uh, for coming on the show. Um, I do want to have you address one more thing. What about there are girls or guys mm. that are in this situation where they're filming or they've been filmed and they're, they they don't they, you know they feel shame and they're just mm-hmm. kind of in a bad place. Maybe they're they're the vi- like they've been a victim. I guess where would they go for? 
for help? Who would they contact? Yeah. Well, definitely feel free to reach out to us. Um, probably the easiest, most accessible way is following us on on Instagram at Exodus Cry. Send us a message. If there's any way we can personally support you or offer you, like direct you to the best resources, whether it's therapy, whether it's um, any kind of legal assistance that anyone is wanting. If anyone ever had a video against their will on a site like Pornhub or any porn site and you want to sue that site for damages, like we will happily connect you. And that is sometimes lawsuits are the only way you can get these companies to, to pay attention and hitting them where it hurts, which is their pocketbook. And that's what we saw with the credit cards. Like the credit card companies cutting ties was one of the biggest breakthroughs. And oh yeah. Yeah, it felt like we were like this little David of an organization going after the big Goliath. Um, that was literally what that was. That was what was that happening. That was a David and Goliath situation. <laughs> mm -hmm. But to God be the glory. And our heart is to, like, I, I would want to tell someone in that situation, like, one day, that you, if there was a video posted you online, there is going to be a day when it will not be able to be posted because unless you give consent and you prove your age, unambiguous consent, like sober consent. We want to take the definition of consent and really hone it in. Because a lot of people are like, well, she gave consent to be in this porn scene, but she's high and drunk out of her mind. Like, is that really her giving consent? Um, what if she consented to do one sex act and she's forced to do something else on, on the set? A lot of people, I, I literally spoke to someone yesterday who just found out that she, um, like someone made a porn video of someone else, but put her face on it and put it on online. So we're seeing the kind of AI, you know, oh, the whole, um, what's that thing called? You know, that yeah, with yeah. like Tom Cruise, they've oh, yeah. been um, like deep fake. Deep fake. That's something that um, I think famous people, celebrities are gonna have to be dealing with of like fake pornography of them being made. We spoke to some actresses and videos of them um, were like edited to be porn and put on Pornhub as well. So there's just a deep fake. I forgot about that. That's out yeah. there too. Yeah, it's gonna yeah. be a uh, very interesting times as we we move forward. But the first things, yeah. first things first, is we got to get that. Like what you guys yeah. are doing is very important. Minimum regulations need yeah. to be passed. Yeah, absolutely. And you guys did. You know, when I heard you on the radio, and I think that's what I heard is that you guys were part of that um, move with the credit cards. I was like, yes, that's amazing. Well, hey. Well, this is the end of the show. Thank you for being on. I'm going to get Benji me. in studio one day soon. We're going to hear his take on everything that's going on um, with what he's been up to. It's been a, been a long time, but thank you for being on. Everyone, yeah. go to Exodus Cry. Find him on Instagram. i got to make sure I got you guys on Instagram. Um, check out Helen Taylor. Look her up. And um, definitely um, just Pray for these guys because yes, they're in the, the belly of the beast. Front line of the front line. <laughs> at, the, at the gates of hell, literally. And uh, thanks a lot. Don't, uh, don't forget to go to thewhosoever's.com. Contact us. Book us. We are bringing the Great Commission to schools, to churches, to skate parks, pretty much anywhere uh, we'll get in to encourage people and let them know that God loves them. He has a plan for them. He'll set them free no matter what they've done or where they've been. Look at me. If God could do something with me, he brought me out of the gates of hell. He can do anything with you. Love you guys. Peace. This has been The Ryan Reese Show. To connect and find out more about Ryan, click on ryan-reese.com. Check us out next Saturday at 9 p.m. for The Ryan Reese Show.